Okay, welcome back to this video on aggregations in the Tableau Prep for Excel users series. If you haven't checked the previous videos out, please do. They are uh, really, really detailed and they build up to this video. So I won't be covering some of the basic concepts. I'll just be referring to those videos instead. In today's video, we're covering the aggregation step. And to allow you to follow along, I've just opened up Tableau Prep and I'm going to be using the sample flow that we've been using all along, Superstore. Um, it's the bottom left uh, flow. And then when you get to this particular view, what I want you to do is delete uh, certain parts of this flow. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna ask you to delete this bottom section of flows and then all the outputs here at the top, okay? So you should just remain with the clean step in the flow and nothing else. Okay, now that you've had the chance to do that, we're gonna get stuck in. Now, the key thing to understand here is that if you've used Tableau Desktop, aggregations have typically been done in the calculations window or in the view, as they'd call it. And that's because when you're visualizing something, everything is happening inside of the view. So aggregations and row level calculations can all happen in the same place in the calculation window. However, when you're working with raw data at a row level, the aggregations need to be almost uh, described in the way that you'd want them to work because what you're actually doing is reshaping the data and rolling up certain rows together to form the aggregated output. And so what you'll see here is if I click on this uh, plus icon, there's actually a specific step that's required for that aggregation step. It's this one here that I've just highlighted. And if I click on that, you'll see that Tableau adds this icon, which looks like a sigma function. I think that's a sigma function. If not, let me know what the right uh, icon is for that. And um, you get this sort of blank pane. Now, unlike previous steps where we've added a step, you've always had a summary view available to you. And the reason you don't get that here with the aggregate view is because at this point, Tableau, Tableau doesn't know what you want to aggregate. And so the way that you describe that is using these two panes. On the left, we have the ability to aggregate by groups. Essentially, these are the grouping fields. And on the right, the thing you're going to be aggregating. So as a very simple example, if I want to aggregate my sales and I want that aggregate, to be based on the categories. Those are the two things that I drag in. And now you start to see the summary working in full force. Because I've only brought in the groups, uh, the category, I just get one single row for each category and one single value for each category. Now I can continue to add different items to this. So for example, I can add subcategory to this list on the left. And then again, we get this grouping. And on the bottom, you can now see this broken down. So now I get every combination of category and subcategory and its own sales value. So this is how we aggregate in Tableau. And don't forget, now the summary view still functions like we had in the clean step or the just the normal calculation steps. Um, but as we add items to this, different items sort of come in and come out. Now. You'll also notice here on the left-hand side that there's a changes column. And so you might be wondering, well, yes, of course, I can see the aggregation steps here. And these are the three fields. But what other changes could I carry out in this particular step? Well, let's say I wanted to exclude the furniture cells. Those changes would also be captured in this aggregation step. And the key thing to notice here is that the aggregation icon here gets a little bit smaller to accommodate the icons along the top. So if you've done any data cleansing inside of another step, it's still going to surface those to you. So again, Tableau Prep is being highly visual about the changes that you're making. If I go back to the settings tab, you'll see that I still have a list of items here that I have not yet dragged in. And so the important thing to bear in mind here is that for everything that comes from this step onwards, we are not going to get any rows that we don't bring into our aggregation, okay? If you wanted to uh, create a relationship between these aggregated views and the original data, you'd have to do like a VLOOKUP or a JOIN uh, to get those two data sets back together again. 
So it's just really important to understand that the aggregation step does mean that you are going to lose certain columns in the final output from that aggregation. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that we are just aggregating numerical values on the right hand side and on the left, we're grouping by dimensional attributes. But what if I wanted to aggregate dimensional attributes? Let's say I wanted to count the number of regions in which I have sold a particular product. Well, what I do is I drag region onto the right hand side. OK, and when I do that, notice that Tableau prep automatically figures out that this is a dimensional attribute. And so therefore, I probably just want to count the dimensional attributes. So it's going to go in and count the number of different regions that it comes across. OK, so if I click on that, you'll see here that that's not the only aggregation I can do. I can count the count as distinct, minimum, maximum, percentile based on regions, or I can group by. Grouping by essentially moves it over to the left-hand side. So it stops treating it as a uh, sort of account and it makes it um, a grouped item. Again, if I click on this dropdown, I still get the ability to rename the field, uh, clean it in a particular way, removing uppercase, lowercase. All of those steps will just live here in my changes column. And so it's really important to understand that now if I add an additional cleansing step to this, you'll see I now have only the four rows. So it's a really important step to understand, but it's also a very, very powerful step because it allows us to do some really, really powerful things like we can calculate totals for a category or a department and then join that or VLOOK up that back to a data set so that we can have that available to us as a calculation. Let's say I want to know what percentage of sales did central contribute to the total sales of the entire country. Well, in order to do that, I'd need to know the total sales for the entire country. And that requires an aggregation in my data set. At a very high level, that's pretty much it with the aggregation steps. There are lots of different aggregations you can look at. There are lots of different ways you can work with it. But essentially, if you take this sort of aggregation, this is your full list of different types of aggregations that you can do. They're very similar to what you can do in Excel. So if you're familiar with Excel, you're already familiar with many of these aggregations. And last but not least, just remember that when you group or bring an item in, if you forget to bring anything in, those aggregations will not come through. So if I needed, for example, this aggregation at a product level and I don't bring that in, the aggregation will not be set to the correct level. Okay, that's it. That's it. It's a very, very simple feature set. If you've enjoyed this video, uh, hit subscribe. If not, drop a comment below. Let me know what kind of content you'd like to see. And I'll catch you in the next video where we'll look at transformations in data.